Hi guys, this is Mario, a graduate from the Copenhagen Business School, or CBS as we all call it. I got a ton of questions about my experience after the previous video I published, link somewhere over here. So I'll deep dive into all these points now. First, what is my take on CBS? What is my like one minute review, if not even less? CBS is great. If you're thinking about it for a bachelor's or for a master's, go for it. Personally, I would highlight three things that make CBS an incredible place to study. First is that it's a great university. It's a very good university. And this specifically in the sense that if you're a CBS graduate, you can get a place at any of the top tier jobs or top tier companies, if that's what you want. So if you want to get into strategy consulting or investment banking or any of these A-list, A-tier, Fortune 500 companies, you can do that. Something to consider, that's something that a lot of people, when they go to university, look into. So you know, here in CBS, you will get covered. Of course, if you want to do something else, you can also do that. But those windows and those opportunities will be open for you as a CBS graduate. Number two is that CBS is completely free, or at least if you're from the EU country. On top of the university being free, you also get, when you study in Denmark, these ESU payments. So it's kind of a student support from the Danish government. So you can also get this as a European if you have a part-time job. And this is an incredible deal. It means that you can finish your studies in CBS, not only not in debt, but also with money in your pocket. And maybe with some investments, some, some like friends got a house, you know, what they were studying. So that's amazing. And that's a deal that you can only do, for example, in Denmark. Number three is that you have so many options. So like classes take two to three days a week on average. You know, you're at least not study full time and you can take part time jobs or share any great clubs or networking opportunities and so on while you study. And that's amazing. That's a great opportunity. On to the questions now. Would I do CBS again? If I decided to study in business again, yes. But fast forward to current times, if I would likely decide to study again, I would do software engineering or some kind of technical engineering thing instead. My experience has been that a lot of what you learn in business school doesn't really transfer directly to the workspace. And I would rather learn things that I can then use and apply for daily life. I'm gonna talk about more of this on a specific things I did in CBS to kind of counter this in a minute. But at the end of the day, I got a really good life and experience out of CBS, including like even met my now wife in CBS. And I, it's great, hey, but again, if you had the opportunity to study something technical, you know, why not? Next question is bachelor's, master's or MBA? What are my takes in all of each of these? I did my master's, but I met enough people doing bachelor's and the MBA to give you my thoughts and views on each of them. Masters are kind of the sweet spot, I would say. They're very international in the sense that there's a lot of Danes, but also a lot of non-Danish European people mostly, but also people from outside of Europe. They take only two years and you could turn that into just one year soon, or that's what the government is discussing. But yeah, so far when I'm shooting this video, it's two years and you get so many opportunities. It's free and again, it's a great opportunity to pick. I'm really, really happy I did my master's in CBS. For bachelors, I would say they're also very good. It's more Danish in a sense that a lot of the times the bachelors are more into Danish. There's more Danish programs and Danish language programs, let's say more Danish students versus the masters. But you still have some English option and some opportunities to get, you know, people from other places also in these programs as well. If you had the opportunity, I think the option is great. If you're an international student, you know, go for it. I didn't do my bachelor's because I didn't even know the option existed, but if you have the option, no, again, all the same benefits apply. MBA, I would be a bit more thoughtful here. I wouldn't do the MBA in CBS. It's not free, so you need to pay for it. And as far as I know that CBS rankings for the MBA is not especially good. Or I mean, at least when, it, when you're gonna be spending so much money on an MBA, you might want to do it in a top five school, like think London Business School, IMD, INSEAD. I mean, of course, if you have an engineering background and you have the opportunity to do an MBA and you can do it in CBS because you live here and you get it paid by the company, great. I don't think it's a waste of money in any way. And I know a lot of people that ended up with a good career after studying an MBA in CBS, but if you're gonna pay it on you from your own pocket and you're coming from abroad to study this, I would be, I don't know, thinking about it. Next question is the entry requirements for CBS. Guys, just look into the CBS website for the specific program you're interested in because the specific requirements will change depending on the program you're gonna take. Now, overall, even for masters in CBS, you don't need a GMAT 
or at least by the time I'm recording this video, you don't need a GMAT. And GMAT is kind of this standard for almost all graduate programs around the world. It's an exam where you basically, if you want to study a master's or an MBA, you need to do it. Not especially hard, but yeah, you need to do it. And then at least for all the English programs, you need to have an English proficiency test. I did the TOEFL, for example, back in the day, and that worked out all right. For the Danish programs, you need to have your Danish proficiency tested. And then if you're doing a master's, for example, you needed to have a number of credits from your bachelor that transfer to CBS. When I did, when I applied myself, I had to translate my bachelor GPA and so on and classes and so on. I was lucky it was from a university that is partners with CBS in South America. So they know the university, we have been doing exchanges, so they know the value of the university. And then I applied and that was pretty much it. It was quite easy for me to get in, but again, of course, it also depends on what is your bachelor university, what is your GPA, and again, what is your level of languages. What about classes and exams in CBS? Let's see how this changes in the age of ChatGPT. But historically, CVS has been a lot about writing papers, and there was a lot of writing papers, and then having oral exams at the end of that period. And again, it took me maybe two or three exams or trials to get a good grasp on this. But after that, I was basically getting top marks almost every time. It's quite easy once you, you know, get, get a good spin on how things work here. You just need to learn to write very specifically, add your academic sources when you make a point, and then be very well prepared for the early exams. Then it's quite straightforward. And as an aside note, no, in Denmark, they have kind of a strange grading scale. So where the highest grade you can get is a 12, and then it goes down to seven, no, sorry, 10, seven, four, two, and then you don't pass when you get a zero or a minus three. If you get a lot of minus threes and zeros, it means that your GPA could be negative, which is you know, pretty funny. But unlike other places I studied myself, and I have studied in the US, in Austria, and in Argentina, I can tell you like it was very hard to fail exams in CBS. You know, you just need to be absolutely terrible to fail in CBS. So it's not too complicated. At least if you had a really tough bachelor's as I did, it was like, wow, this is pretty straightforward. What about exchange options? Yeah, you can do an exchange in CBS during your bachelor's and also in your master's or both, you know, if you want. And sometimes you can do more than one exchange, as far as I know. And you can also do SEMs for selected programs of the master's. Not for all master's, but some of them. I didn't do an exchange when I was in CBS. I got selected to go to Lyon and my now wife got selected to go to Singapore, but we both were together and we had already done a lot of experiences abroad and we had jobs. So we felt like, hey, let's stay here. But again, if that's what you want to do, a lot of my friends did exchange programs also during the masters and I had a great time. I know that CVS is partnered with a lot of top tier universities around the world. So it's definitely something you can for sure do. Next point is what about extracurriculars in CBS? I mean, this is one of my favorite things about CBS. There are so many options. So I joined, for example, the ISAC Student Leadership Organization, which was, it was really enlightening, but I, at the end of the day, I met so many friends by it, which is good. The Entrepreneurship Club, because I also had my online business back in the day as well, before this YouTube stuff. The choir, it was full of girls, so it's like, okay, I was you know, new in town, single, so it's like, oh, why not? And then there were also some of the sport clubs. I did some runs and things like that. But there's so much stuff, right? I mean, it changes all the time, but there was a finance club, there's a consulting case competition, you name it, there is one. So if you're in CBS, I would suggest that you join as many of these clubs as possible because it's super fun, it's absolutely worth it. And that's basically what you get. What you learn in class, you might forget it, but if you make really good relationships, if you make meet a lot of people and you will through these clubs, you're gonna have the time of your life. Next point is classes to recommend. In CBS, at least when I was doing my studies, you had two semesters where you had classes that were basically like the program of the classes. And then you had the opportunity to take one semester of electives. What I did and I would recommend to most people is that try to learn something like that you can apply in business, some concrete knowledge during your electives. So if you have any coding classes or any engineering and stuff like that, apply the statistics, you name it, take that one, even though it's going to be more work than taking any random class, but that's something that you will then be able to use. And even some kind of niche topics. For example, I took a pharma marketing, so pharmaceutical marketing class, and that was really good because I basically knew nothing about pharmaceutical industry. I never worked in the pharmaceutical industry, but it basically explained all how clinical trials work, what is like the you know, stage one, stage two, stage three, how much at cost, why are they doing things in this way and this other way. So it was super enlightening. And again, like 
even when COVID happens and so on, because I got all this knowledge from the class, you know, I would still understand a lot of things on how it works with the vaccines, you name it. That was a really good elective. And again, it's not just the only one, right? Just look for things that are super concrete like that, but then you can apply in your day to day. Last point is on the master's. I mean, you also need to do one for bachelor's, but on master thesis, that's my own experience personally. The last semester in all of the CBS masters, you need to write a thesis. Let's see how that works, you know, in the new ChatGPT life. I mean, let's put it this way. Nobody ever is gonna read your thesis beyond what you do in like the professor and the assistant professor in the university. So optimize to write your thesis fastest way possible. Because at the end of the day, what you want to get is the thesis up and down and then get into the workspace and to the work life. So my recommendation is that if you have a student job, write your thesis related to something in the student job or alternatively use it as a way to network into some kind of company. So normally what they ask you is to write a thesis in partners. So basically have two people writing a thesis together. If you can try to write it on your own, because again, even if you have an excellent partner or like I had really good like study partners and we, a lot of the exams we had done it as a you know, joint groups with two or three friends from CBS. For a thesis, it's good that you take it at your own tempo. And for example, for myself, I wrote it myself and it was really fast and just get it done, move ahead and you don't need to depend on other people. Again, if you have the perfect side partner, you know, go for it, sure, you can do that, go for it. But overall, my recommendation is just to do it on your own. And if you can, again, as fast as possible, just look at it as a bureaucracy that you just need to get out of the way, unless you can frame it in a way that is gonna empower your career in a big way. To repeat, I had an excellent experience in CBS. I'm still in Denmark, you know, so all these years later, I love the place and I am really grateful for the opportunity I had in CBS. It has completely changed my life. And if you had the opportunity to study your bachelor's or master's, I'm sure it's gonna be a good plus for your life and for your career and for basically your friendships. So go ahead and do it. Peace.